organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, a UI faculty member is one of the many prosecuted in a prostitution sting. The latest details emerge. And in sports, records fall halfway across the country. What the Iowa men's track team took home with them from Louisiana. Plus why one transit line is singing its way through town. R-E-S-P-C-T, find out what it means to me. <laughs> That's next right here on Daily Iowan TV. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowan. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now, you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Good evening and welcome into your Thursday edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Lauren Moss. And I'm Jake Abrams. Our top story tonight, 16 charged in a county-wide prostitution sting. Johnson County officials arrested multiple people in a single operation, though not all were affiliated with one another. Those charged range from age 21 to 55, and three of them, uh, the three of the charged are medical professionals within the area. 44-year-old Scott Clemens works with the Clemens and Jones Family Dentistry. 51-year-old Timothy Maves is an anesthesiologist, anesthesiologist with Mercy Hospital in Iowa City. And a clinical assistant professor from the UI College of Dentistry was charged 42-year-old Lance Forbes. Police say that Forbes was charged with paying an undercover officer for oral sex. The sting operation has been going on for over a month now, and police say that all of those charged are locally from Johnson County. Many are not all from Johnson County, excuse me. Many travel from across the nation. And now that the weather is nicer, more people are looking to bikes for transportation. But if you don't have one, no worries. Check out the library. But not the one you're thinking of. Daily Iowa TV's Christina Targos takes a look into a place where bikes are checked out and not books. The Iowa City Bike Library is more than just a bike shop. It is a literal library where you can come check out bikes. It was started in 2004 by Brian Loring when he started checking out bikes at the farmer's market. It became popular, so in 2005, he decided to expand. He went to Environmental Advocates, a program dedicated to helping local people make the world a better place. Came to Environmental Advocates and said, hey, um, here, here's this idea. Um, uh, would you be willing to work with us? And we said, sure. And through them, he got the building that is now the bike library. And this shop is no ordinary bike shop. Like I said earlier, it works like a library. Their goal is to provide the community with bikes. People can come on Saturday morning at 10 a.m., although get there early because people start lining up around 7 to check out a bike. They usually rent out 10 to 20 bikes a week. Because all of their bikes are donated, they are fixed up by volunteers and then triple checked to make sure they are in good condition. And if a bike cannot be repaired, it is scrapped for parts right down to the frame so little or even nothing has to go to the landfill. The bikes range from $50 to $150 and are yours to use for six months. If the bike is returned within the six months, the deposit will be refunded. Or if you really like the bike, after six months, it's yours to keep. The bike library is very dedicated to teaching people how to fix their own bikes. We also teach people how to fix their own bikes. We're very big into empowering people because a bike is, it's a form of freedom really, it's transportation. Every Saturday, they open their shop for Run to Bench. $5 gives you access to all their tools and even their knowledge of how to fix a bike. They won't fix your bike for you, but they will definitely help you. We will bend over backwards to show you how to fix your own bike. Christina Targos, Daily Iowan TV. Still much more to come on Daily Iowan TV. Consuming alcohol can lead to many health risks, but can binge drinking during college lead to cancer later in your life? And in sports, the return to Iowa City, a preview of the one and only event that the Hawkeye golf team will have on its home golf course. But first, let's check in with our Daily Island TV's Alyssa Bergamini for a look at our weekend weather. Alyssa? Yeah, guys, this past week we saw some chillier temperatures, and I think students are ready for that summer sun again. I've got a mix of good and bad news. The good is we'll see some higher temps, but the bad is there are some showers on the way. For Friday morning, we'll see highs in the 52 range, with a 60% chance of showers. The afternoon will pick up near the 60s and dip down to 45%.
will return for the mid-50s for the evening with similar chances of rain then as well. Taking a look ahead for the weekend, we've got anywhere from 60 to 70 percent chances for rain but high 60 low 70 degree temps out in early next week. You can expect a slight amount of showering with temps scaling back down to the 50 range. Well, not bad for early April. As they say, these showers should bring May flowers. Stick it out and we should be seeing some pretty hot conditions in the coming weeks. Back to you. Alcohol is the number one drug problem in America and binge drinking may have some serious consequences if, if necessary steps are overlooked. Daily Iowa TV health reporter Muriel Kone has more. The month of April ushers in National Alcohol Awareness Month and with it comes the issue of binge drinking amongst teens and young adults. And although alcohol in moderation is okay and in some instances good for you, greater concern lies in how educated people are about its effects. I think it's good that um, alcohol awareness is um, raised because um, I found it beneficial my freshman year when we had to take the alcohol EDU um, on ICON. And the benefits of taking alcohol EDU here at the university wasn't the only thing that impacted Lawson. It got you thinking about um, when you do start drinking, um, how to be safe about it, or um, if you don't want to start drinking, ways to go about doing that as well. One of the few ways to be safe about drinking as an underage student is not to drink at all, but instead replace the drink with healthier choices to avoid serious health problems in the future. And since tobacco and alcohol are the two biggest risk factors for head and neck cancer, it is important to make the smart choices early. And according to the Center for Disease Control, alcoholic liver disease accounts for over 15,000 deaths a year, and alcohol-induced deaths, excluding accidents and homicides, make up over 24,000 deaths a year. So the next time you have a few drinks, keep in mind the health risk. Muriel Kone, Daily Iron TV. And now for a look beyond Iowa. George Zimmerman made his first in-court appearance earlier today after being charged with second-degree murder in the Trayvon Martin case. The judge said he was found probable cause with the case and that an arrangement for Zimmerman to enter a non-guilty plea will be held on May 29th. And it's never a good thing to find a gator in your hotel room, but earlier today a Louisiana hotel guest found this alligator here crawling in his room. He tried to catch it, but the gator bit him before officials arrived. Animal control replaced the gator into its natural habitat. And now Daily Iowa TV's Chelsea Byrne is here for a look at Hawkeye Sports. And with the golf team heading all over to these warm climates to compete, I wouldn't be surprised if the UI golfers saw some gators along the way. What do you think, Chelsea? Well, you know, Jake, I'd have to ask, but I wouldn't be surprised if those Iowa golfers had. They've been all over the South, competing everywhere from Georgia to Texas to Florida and, of course, Louisiana. But this weekend, they'll finally get the comforts of home. Sports reporter Alicia Denyes caught up with the team to see how they felt about hosting their own Invitational. The men's golf team has traveled many miles this season to compete at very different courses. But now it's time to get their own home course, Finkbine, in its finest condition to host the 19th annual Hawkeye Great River Entertainment Invitational this weekend. Iowa will host 11 teams from all over the country in their Invitational. Coach Mark Hankins definitely feels his team is at an advantage because they are playing at home. The biggest uh, home court advantages in sports. Um, it's a golf course that's very unique. Um, we know a lot of the, the situations that may happen out there, the green speed, the green break. Iowa won the tournament last year, but this year Coach Hankins is shooting for different goals. He would like to finish in the top three as a team, but would rather focus more on individual achievements. It's a matter of really who goes out and plays well. Um, you know, each one of these guys has played the golf course very well, but you have to put three rounds together. Even though Hankins wants to see his team take one tournament at a time, all this time at home has him and his players thinking about end of the season goals also. Weeks at home, it's time to get back on the road. You know, then we go to Purdue and um, end up at Big Tens and hopefully get into NCAA regionals. The Iowa men's golf team is currently ranked 26 in the nation and number one in the Big Ten Conference. They are competing tremendously under coach Mark Hankins and are sure to finish strong. Alicia Denius, Daily Iowa TV Sports. 
And as Alicia mentioned, that Hawkeye Invitational will be taking place out at Finkbine Golf Course Saturday and Sunday. But real quick, let's look at the other Hawks in action around Iowa City this weekend. The much-anticipated spring game happens on Saturday afternoon. Gates open at 11 a.m. for fans to get their first look at Kirk Ferentz's 2012 squad and all the changes that have come from the offseason. Women's tennis hosts Michigan State Friday night and Michigan on Sunday at the Hawkeye Tennis and Recreation Complex. And finally, the Iowa softball team faces a three-game series with conference newcomers Nebraska. It'll be a doubleheader on Saturday and the final game Sunday at 3 p.m. And a team that hasn't had quite as many chances to compete at home is still making waves halfway across the country. The men's track and field team had an exciting Easter weekend down at LSU with two of the seniors on the team walking away with school records. Eric Sawinski claimed the school record in the 800 meter and DITV's Annie Costable caught up with Jeffrey Heron to hear about his record-breaking high jump. This past weekend, senior high jumper Jeffrey Heron broke the 34-year-old high jump record previously set by Bill Hansen in 1978 on a second attempt clearance of 2.24 meters. Senior captain Troy Doris and junior Josh Larney, members of the jump squad here at Iowa, talked about his efforts and had nothing but positive things to say. I'm excited. I'm happy for him. Um, it wasn't really a surprise to me, to be honest, because I see Jeff working hard every day. Um, I live with Jeff, so I mean, we talk about we talk about all our goals every single day. I felt like, and all the coaches felt like it was a long time coming. And I, mean, I, I jumped six ten out of high school, so I I kind of saw it as like a three year progression all in one day. The hard work finally pays off. You know, the coaches have been putting in a lot of hard work. We've been putting in a lot of hard work. Um, you know, all my teammates have been working hard. Troy, you know, he's a really good training partner. And with Big Ten's rapidly approaching, these three know it will take a lot of hard work now to win the title come May. Oh, we have a shot at the Big Ten title. Uh, I think that the team morale is definitely picking up since indoor. But I think we uh, we all need to uh, lock down our events. You know, we have to just stay consistent. I mean, stay consistent, but at the same time, it's kind of weird to explain. But we at the same time we have to keep moving up, and you know, consistency is really just you know repeating the same thing. And after last year's Big Ten title, this Iowa track and field team is looking for a repeat. Annie Costable, Daily Iowa TV Sports. These record breakers and the rest of the Hawkeye team will finally get to compete at home next weekend in the much-anticipated Musco Twilight event. Jake and Lauren, back to you guys. All right, thanks, Chelsea. Well, on Saturday, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inducts new members, and this bus line in Cleveland, Ohio, is celebrating. You can see these drivers here. Here's a Aretha Franklin and Tina Turner's there, too. Gene Simmons, and uh, there's Gene. And then George Clinton also makes an appearance on the bus. So these guys are really representing the city of Cleveland and their music. Okay, pretty <laughs> impressive. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at Friday's pages of the Daily Iowan. As odd as, as, as it sounds, a new student organization on campus, and it's for parents. Be sure to catch the story tomorrow. Plus, get a glimpse at a controversy dealing with city council's rezoning amendments and what it means for Iowa City. Well, that's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time on Sunday or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night.